All right, let's take you on a quick shop tour today. There's been a lot of changes in the last little while and I, <laughs> I'm pretty stoked about most of them. Uh, one of the big changes that we made was we did a big shop cleanup. And I wanna do a shop tour to kind of brag because it put a lot of work in. I've been working in this shop probably for about 15 years now. And with young kids and stuff, you guys know how it is if you have kids. Shit just piles up slowly over time and over time. And today we're gonna to take you on a tour after I did the big cleanup. And also, if you haven't seen the pre-tour, which was like about a year ago before I did the cleanup, I got another shop tour that you can check out as well. But let's take a look at this one and jump right into it. Okay, so one of the first things I wanna show you guys is the closing lathe. Now the closing Matosa lathe is a really, really good lathe. And if you don't know its history, it's, as I understand, it's a Colchester lathe, but it was made in Spain. Now, this lathe has been really, really good for me. I put my own digital readout on it. It's, uh, I think it's from like the DRO store or one of the, one of the knockoff eBay stores. And it, it is super accurate. And like, it was even a little bit too accurate because I had to put a bit of tape over top of the digital readout because it actually had too many numbers after it and it just started to get confusing. Also with this machine here, I also had to fix this on the end here, the tailstock. It came with an air assist for some strange reason. It probably was tailored to the job that they had making widgets or whatever they made. And it just wasn't something that I was gonna need on it. So, so I pulled all that garbage off, threw it in the scrap bin, dug through the hand wheel drawer and put another hand wheel. One on. thing I do wanna show you here though is, if you haven't seen the video on me making this, this is pretty darn cool. Well, let me pull it out here. So for the steady rest, I've actually put a ball bearing steady rest on it. And I did keep my originals, which I think is important, the brass ones. And I'm gonna to have to refit these up at some point. But the ball bearing steady rest does leave a little bit of a mark on some of the work. However, it's working pretty, it's working pretty good for me. I have no complaints over it. And there's a video for that. I'll throw in the link below. Check that one out as well. So I'm pretty sure some of you already noticed I'm rocking socks and sandals right now. Judge me if you want. That's okay. <laughs> it's my weekend and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy it. So also underneath here, I've got pretty much everything I need to run this lathe. I've got my four jaw chuck. I've got my face mount plate. And I've even got some of the stuff for the mill machine as well. And I've got them on really convenient rollers just so I can roll it in and out. And I don't want them sitting on the floor because every once in a while there's either a little oil leak or, you know, God knows maybe there's some water gets in here. And I don't want that water getting on any of the stuff here. So we want to make sure we keep it off the floor. Over here, I've got an extra stone for the RUR. We'll get to that here in a second. I've got a tool post grinder that I've got, and I've actually got to do a little repair job on it. It uh, suffered a little bit, suffered a little bit of damage. And I've got a precision precision vise here, but we'll break that out at some other point. So I've also got a video on this system here too. This is a 600 volt three phase machine, and I've only got 220 coming into this shop. I've actually got another video on how my phase converter works and how the transformers work. So the other thing that I wanna show you as well, the first mill machine, this is a really good machine. Originally 15 years ago when we bought our house, my wife thought I was crazy. <laughs> I rolled this into the mortgage and I think it was 4,500 bucks at the time, but it was brand new when I got it. Basically it came out of a shop that was making, I think underwater sea diving suits or something like that. And it never got used because it didn't have a feed on it. Still doesn't have a feed on it but it is a fantastic machine and it's still got a lot of life left in it. A couple of the mods that I've made to it over the years, I put the digital quill on, the DRO quill. It's actually been pretty handy getting to the right depths on stuff. And I'm actually, for the money, I think it's, I think it's pretty worth it. One of the other mods that it came with is this column. It had one of those extra spacers in there, especially me being a tall guy kind of want that extra space just to give me that extra height and whatnot. You'll notice a bunch of my machines are actually jacked up a bit. One of the small repairs that we're going to have to do here pretty quick is the oiler down here. It's kind of busted. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with it, but she's kind of given up the ghost and uh, there'll probably be a video here in the next couple months on that one too. 
On the middle machine, just like everything else, this bad boy runs on a phase converter. Just pretty simple. American Rotary, I've had this one installed for about 10 years and it's absolutely bulletproof. It, it's pretty simple on the inside. Let's take a quick look here. Okay, on the inside here, we got our start stop switch. We got the capacitors. And then basically, if you look here, there's basically two lines coming in with your copper ground. And these are both hot. It's gonna go over to generate your third leg, which one of these is gonna go down to the motor. The starter starts your motor. Once the motor's running, it's gonna generate extra power and give you your 220. All right, what else do we got over here? Now, this is actually really cool. Let's check this out over here. Now, on one of my ventures over to the scrapyard, I picked this bad boy up and <laughs> it's, it looks to be like a medical cabinet from like, a clinic or whatever, and it is just perfect for the shop. I've got my drills, I've got some of my clamping stuff in here. It's got wheels on it that lock. It's got sides that fold up and down. And although be it right now, <laughs> it's covered in stuff. I'm just doing a big shop cleanup and I'm selling servo motors and splitter boxes. And this is gonna be clean here in another couple days once all that junk flies out the door. So one of the other things I have here is a heavy duty flat top rolling table. I've got my indexing heads, rotary table on here. Um, and generally these machines are a little bit, pardon me, these fixtures are a little bit heavier than normal. And I can pick these fixtures up, I can put them on the milling machine table and it's not too big of a slog to do it. And you're not picking them up off the ground and hurting your back. So I think if you have the room for one of these in your shop, I think this is the way to go for your fixtures. I don't know, maybe you got different, a different way of doing it. I'd love to hear it if you can. Post it, post it in the comments below. Maybe there's something I could be doing better here. I'd really appreciate your so input. So coming along a little further now, over, here, over here, I've got the storage rack and the storage rack, every shop needs to put something somewhere. And this has been working pretty good for me. I mean, I've only had it this way for a couple of days, but I've got some of my other little measuring tools up here. I've got all my milling machine stuff, which is a little bit further away from the milling machine that I like. I may move this at some point just to get it closer, maybe switch this around and put it underneath with the fixtures. And I've got other stuff like, oh, if I can pull it open. Ugh. I've got the handle drawer underneath it. Now, because I'm running big, big three phase equipment, sometimes the relays go on them and I just, I just hold on to stuff and I hold on to a bit of these things just because at some point, you know it's gonna go down on a Friday night. And, you know, rather than <laughs> stressing over it on the weekend to get the job done, I make sure that I have some of the parts in here that I can just quickly swap out. And at minimum, even if it's, even if it's kind of close, but it works, but it's not gonna work in the long term, at least I can get the job done, throw that used part away. And by that time, I'll have a brand new part that comes. Let's move but on a little bit more over here. Over here, I've got my CNC plasma cutter slash router slash flame table, soon to be laser. Eventually I'm gonna put the laser on there and do some gasket cutting out. And this has been a really, really good machine that I built myself. Now, originally I had stepper motors on it. Stepper motors are a great place to start. If you don't know what a stepper motor is, it's basically this motor here. The computer sends a signal that says, hey, move 10,000 steps that equal like, 10 inches and it'll move it. But the computer doesn't know whether it actually did it or not. And one of the problems that I had with that was every once in a while I'd miss a bunch of steps. And eventually these steps compounded if the machine ran for a couple hours on a job and all of a sudden it's from here, it's moving over there. So the solution was I spent a bit of money and upgraded it to servo motors. Now a servo motor, I just so happen to have one over here. A servo motor not only has the driver to drive the motor, it also has an eye on it that counts the feeds on how many turns it's actually made and it feeds it back to the computer or a special board and it'll make the adjustments as it makes mistakes and it'll just move it that little bit and it's always keeping track of where it is, which is really good if you need accuracy. So coming more over here, this used to be kind of the dumping grounds of where I put all my metal and it was horrendous. Like there's metal all the way up to the top and it was always falling over and it was pretty darn gross. And now I've basically organized 
all my Pelican cases, all my Milwaukee cases, and I even have some storage up top here. And it's, it's working really good. I'm glad I did this because now it's out of the way. And a lot of the metal I moved out to the side shop. Now, the side shop's a bit of a nightmare right now because I moved that metal out there. But that's okay. I've got some time next week <laughs> or at some point, and we're going to try fixing that shop up as well. Up in here, I've seen a lot of these guys using the PVC pipes to hold their tools. We've got a charge station over here. And would you fucking believe it? Well, I was digging out on that side over there, that whole rack over there. Um, I found a valve grinder that my dad gave me years ago. And you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some jobs that are coming up that are going to be just perfect for this as well. So I've got this based here. I've also got my mag drill over here with a bunch of the mag drills that go in it. Well, actually, no, this Milwaukee, these don't fit in. I've got another mag drill mag drill somewhere else um, and it's a really good storage area as well I've got my CNC machine over here I haven't put up the plasma screen yet I'm actually going to run a plasma TV screen up here to run this machine I've got one in the side shop and it pretty much the computer will plug straight into it with an HDMI and it's going to be just perfect. so cool. coming over here I've got my grinding station now if you haven't noticed already I don't have it in this video here, but I'll show a clip of it. And I cover all of my machines with blankets. So when I have dirty jobs like plasma cutting or grinding, all of the other machines are gonna be covered, keeping that grinding dust off of it that's gonna decay your ways. It's not ideal having a surface grinder or a cylindrical grinder or, or most even like a plasma table in a shop like this, but you do what you gotta do with small shops. And this is what's working for me, cover everything in the shop, do the job, clean up the job, and then I can take the sheets off. And generally I'll just leave the sheets up anyways. Uh, one of the things that I've actually done to this machine is, I've got a digital readout on it, super accurate, once again from the DRO store on eBay. Man, like, I can't say enough good things about these things. These things are super accurate. Um, even the, like the, the offshore ones, um, you don't need to go Mitatoyo or, or Sterrett. I don't even know if Sterrett makes them, but they're super accurate for what I need. I mean, this will go down to a tenth or a tenth of a tenth of a thou. And man, that's, that's just perfect for what I need. What I do have to fix on this machine here is I've got a bit of a weird balancing issue on this thing. I think it's rocking a little bit and that's given me little ways, little bumps in my uh, grinding. And then I've also got to kind of level this out here but that's a project for another day. Let's come over to look at the machine over here. Now, this is a Ribbon RUR 800, and I just got this machine three, four years ago. My father retired, and I, he, he was pretty stellar, man. Like, he rebuilt this thing from top to bottom, and in the next couple months, I'm gonna get this thing up and running. I, I probably have a couple little jobs I wanna do with it. Actually, really, I just wanna play with it and, and toy with it, and we gotta level it out, and get some things going on it. And I've actually got to put a digital readout system on it. I've had it so long. I've had it so long. It's got a bunch of dust on it. And you know, these are easy systems to install and I'm actually gonna do a video on that, but that's probably gonna be closer to fall time. Some of the upcoming videos that I'm gonna do, actually, you're gonna to have to look out for this one. I'll put it in the notes below because by the time you watch this, that video is already gonna be out. I'm going to do a video coming up on how to get monetized for the shop guy. I think it might be a two, three part series. Don't quote me on that. But I think the shop guys need to know how to get monetized if they want to do that. And really what you're making off of getting monetized. And we'll go through it. I just got monetized two months ago. And I think there's some really good points that I'm going to make in that video. But stay tuned for that or check it out in the link below. And we'll move on to showing you some other stuff in this shop. Let's move this stuff out of the way here and let's have a look at this. Now, this is a tool cutter grinder that I've had for quite a few years and it's been worth its weight in gold in not only sharpening, say, end mills, but the rotor brooches that I've got over there. And it's a bit of a saver for the shop. And one of the other things that I actually did for this machine was, up here, up what here. I did was I actually took a treadmill apart and I know it sounds a little bit bush league, but I took the treadmill motor, put it on here. There's a video on this. You should check that out as well. And 
I've actually got a control box and I show every step of the way on how I do that in this video. Once again, <laughs> check it out in the links below. It's a little bit challenging to figure out how to match your controller and figure out what controls go to what. But once you figure that out, this is a really, really good system. And I can control this just by touching the dial. It's just a matter, pushing the button, it's gonna speed it up. And with this machine here, it was actually easier. I think this was like $20 here. It's an RPM sensor that just measures how many times this goes around, calculates it for you. And then I can literally pick whatever RPM I want just by pushing the button up, pushing the button down. Super easy. And the amount of power that it has, I'm very happy with it for this job. Things, one of the other things that I did wire into it was a little yellow light on it to tell me that when the machine's plugged in, I can unplug it. Since I did this myself, I don't want to burn my shop down because something didn't quite work out. So when that light's on, I know it's plugged in. I can just unplug it. It's an immediately a visual thing. Hey, it was cool hanging out with you today. And if you've got any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments down below. And also I'm going to post up a video here that I figure you might like and check this next one out and we'll catch you on the next one. Have fun and stay safe.